Hello everyone, I hope you're all well. I thought I'd pop by and create another video for YouTube, but using a mixture of stamps, but also incorporating my new release, which has just been released literally a couple of days ago. And I'm actually on the craft store this Friday, the 19th of November. And I'm on the craft store for a one day special on the Friday starting at 6 p.m. And I'll be showcasing uh, my one day special. I have, I think it's six stamps, is it six or five? Five or six stamps in the one day special. And I just thought I'd use one of those and incorporate it with a couple of other designs as well. So a couple of my stamps that have been released on Friday are these penguins. These have been released this Friday on the craft store. Uh, they're actually released now with stockists, but I've actually got a one day special on Friday with other designs as well, with some flower designs, etc. that all work together beautifully. Um, and my show starts at 6 p.m. Then I'm on again at 8 p.m. on Friday. And then Saturday morning, the 20th, I'm on at 8 a.m., 12 and 4 p.m. So I thought I'd pop by and create a card because I like to give you some inspiration with the stamps and if I can give you the inspiration before you think of buying the stamps then I just think that sort of shows you how they can be used so what I thought I'd do is I thought I'd cut a couple of circles mainly because these were on my desk let's be honest these were on my desk so I'm actually prepping for shows at the moment so I'm just going to create a simple design so this circle is two and three quarter inches in width and this circle is, Tracy can't measure, one and three quarter inches. And I thought I'd use these because they're on my desk. I'm literally going for whatever's on my desk, to be honest, mainly because I'm short on time. But I still like to create as many projects as possible just to give you lots of ideas. So what I'm doing is I'm distressing the circles. I'm just distressing the edges of them just to scuff them up a little bit and I'm just using the edge of my scissors just be careful when you're using your scissors just so that you don't you know you don't cut yourself if you've got really sharp scissors to be honest some of my scissors are worse for wear they're not super sharp but just be careful of that so I'm just distressing those edges just a little bit and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp on these circles first, I think, just to get my inspiration flowing, just to get ideas flowing. Now, these penguins have got, let me just move these out of the way. They've got cool me and you because I thought the penguins together would be a perfect Valentine's card. So you've got me and you, hugs, brrr, do you like the sound effects, and penguin. I love doing the sound effects, you know, what am I like? And then this one, this penguin has together, chilly and icy. The idea is, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> is that you can use them for your winter projects, your Christmas cards, your Valentine's cards and your winter cards, anniversary cards. So, so, to, so that you've got lots of ideas and so that they're not just one trip ponies, as I always say. I like them to offer more so that you can use them in many ways. Just cleaning my acrylic blocks. It got a little bit of red ink on there. So let me just dry my acrylic block. So what I'm going to do is just move that card out of the way. Before I do, I'll just tell you the measurements of the card. The card is three and a half inches in width by eight inches in length. So like a DL card, double length. And it's just with Pink Frog Smooth Card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these and just see what I want on my circle. So I definitely want that one, I think. Doesn't matter, we can always change it if we didn't. But I definitely want that penguin. I love him. So I'm going to ink that penguin up. Just give that a good inking. And I'm using my Versafine Claire Nocturne ink. Just over inked a little bit there. And then what I'm going to do is just stamp part of my penguin just on the circle. And I'm just going to allow that ink just to sit on there for a few seconds, 
just so that we get a really good impression. So I'm just allowing that to rest on there. You don't have to press too hard. It's just allowing the ink just to rest on the card. So there we've got part of our penguin. So we'll just place him back. I'm trying to get into good habits and placing my stamps back, mainly because I then spend three hours looking for the stamps because I can't find them anywhere, especially when you're prepping for shows because you end up with product everywhere. So what I want to do now, shall we mix the penguins up? So then I'm going to get this little penguin. No, we'll have this little penguin. Oh dear, I can see it's going to be one of them days where I can't make my mind up. Now, the perfect thing is that this penguin faces the other way. And I wanted him to face the other way because then you can have like a heart in the middle and create like anniversary cards if you want to pop a heart. So just stamping that little penguin. There we go. And I just want part of the images. I don't want the whole image, that's why I'm using a circle. Just wipe that away. Just be careful when you're picking up stamps that you've inked, obviously you're going to get inky fingers. So just make sure that you give those a wipe. Now this penguin, he's got a distorted beak, which I love, and he's also got um, some detail on his body. Now I may just want to stamp Yes, that's it. So this is the smaller circle. I don't want two big circles. And what I'm trying to show here is that you don't have to use the whole image. Just because I give you the whole image doesn't mean it has to be used that way. So I'm going to place that penguin on there. Even when we use part of the image, we can see that it's a penguin. So just allow that ink to sit on there again. We go. The hardest bit is deciding which one to use, if I'm honest. And we've got the little version. Just add those. So we're just going to add the little one just here, like so. And it doesn't need too much pressing because it's just a little stamp. And let's just wipe up that mess just so that we don't get it all over our fingers. So what we've got so far, if I just stand up, you can see we've just got the penguins stamped on there. Let's move these penguins just out of the way. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this stamp here. Um, which is from my Follow Your Own Path. It's got beautiful birds on there and chevrons. And it's got a little, it's got a kingfisher, a mini kingfisher, a toucan and all these sentiments. And what I like to use on here and on the actual craft store on Friday, I'll actually have uh, quite a few of my A5s and border stamps and they'll be on... Um, a really good deal pick and mix deal so that'll be quite good so what i've got here is i've got mermaid lagoon distress oxide and again there was no thought process in this the, th the thought process was this is on my desk let's see what i can make so i'm going to take that mermaid lagoon and i'm going to stamp this text so I'm going to stamp first generation just on there and the oxides stamp beautifully. So first generation, second generation. So we've got first and second generation stamping. And I'm going to ink it again. And again, just move it slightly. So first generation stamping, second generation stamping. Just so that you've got 
a little bit of a background like this just so that you can see that and I'm just going to give that stamp a wipe you need to remember to give your stamp a wipe just so that you don't use your VersaFine Claire afterwards if you use your VersaFine Claire afterwards it'll be very dark it'll be very dark it'll it'll affect the effectiveness of the VersaFine Claire if you don't remove the oxide from your stamp when you come to use it you can tell me words are all over the place can't you I can so what I'm going to do is the idea is that these are going to be on here like this so I can st I can add more of the background stamping if I wish when I'm ready so the idea is that these are going to be on here like so that's my idea so far and what I'm going to do then is just take this stamp set which is my A4 pine cone stamp set and I'm going to take the leaves from there I'm just going to give the back of my stamp a little bit of a wipe sometimes it loses its stickiness because I use the stamps without an acrylic block you're putting your greasy paw prints on the back of the stamp or you're picking up bits from the back of the stamp and it loses its stickiness so either wash it under warm water or just wipe it with a baby wipe so what i'm going to do then is i'm going to ink some of these a couple of these leaves just with pine cone versifying claire so i'm going to use my pine cone versifying claire and i'm going to just stamp my leaves just onto there and I'm using it without an acrylic block and I'm going to do first generation, move it slightly and do second generation. Just to give a second generation print. Let me lift that up so that you can see. So it just gives the second generation print. What that second generation print does is it gives you depth to the design. So that's why I'm adding the second generation just gives a little bit of depth so I'm just going to stamp and you don't have to stamp the whole image you can have part of the image as well so you stamp once turn your stamp so you've got a different angle for your second generation print just so that it gives you can even get a third generation it just gives a little bit more depth to that so just wipe that clean just so that we don't get in a mess what I'm going to do is just stamp it a little bit round the edge. Make sure I'm still in camera. So I'm just going to stamp a little bit around the edge. First generation, second generation. And then we've still got some ink on this little one. So first generation, second generation third generation and you might even get a fourth generation yes so we can just place that back so what we've got now is our leaves and the blue text so far I just keep wiping my surface just so that it stays nice and clean So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this star stencil. I'm just going to use the Mermaid Lagoon ink once again with a piece of cut and dry foam. And I'm just going to apply that ink. That's, and then I'm just going to, I'm not pressing on very hard. I'm pressing really lightly over the stencil so I'm not pressing very hard at all so because I've added enough ink to that cut and dry foam I'm just blending very lightly and I'm not pressing too hard just so that I've got those stamp those stamps those stars on there just remember to give your stencil a wipe or spritz it with water and do a, a second generation print on your card by dabbing it on your card but make sure you give your stencil a wipe because if you do, if you're like me, you'll come to your next project. Forget that you use blue on there. 
and then you'll put another colour on the top and it'll be a different than what you're expecting. So just so you can see, that text is still visible underneath the stars. So what I want is this here and this here. Or do I want it just down like so? I'm now going to talk to myself for the whole time because that's just me all over. I like talking to myself. And I put my glue so that I can see it. There it is in front of me. Too much wishful thinking that I'd remember. So before I do that, I'm just going to get one of my other stamps that's actually in the one day special. I'm just going to reach for that. So one of my other stamps that will be in the show is the violet stamp set. And on this stamp set, we've got the little violet stamp and then we've got days of the week, journal, garden calendar, weekly, monthly and planner so that you can use it if you want to make a garden calendar or something. But believe it or not, just what I want from this stamp set is the little heart. So there's a little heart on there. Let's move this out of the way. And I'm going to oh I'm going to add the heart to these. Now what I want to do is I want to we've got that blue in the background and I want to add the blue here. So I'm going to ink this little heart with Mermaid Lagoon and a touch of blueprint sketch. Just a little touch of blueprint sketch. And what I'm going to do is just add the heart to here to call my concentration just to add that heart just so that we've got that little heart added to there just because it brings a bit of the blue that's in the background to the foreground and it just means the design is thought about so touches of that blueprint sketch again Just add that heart to there. There we go. So just wipe that so I remember when I next use it. No idea where the plastic's gone. There it is. Just place that back in. Then I'm going to add these like this. So let's just, let's add this big circle one first. Little bit of a hair there, which is my hair. Believe it or not, I molt so much, it's unbelievable. So just add that you can put 3d foam on if you wish but if you're posting out and you don't want it too bulky then you can keep it just single layer just add that one let's turn that a little bit that's better like so and what we have to hope is that Tracy's left a pen on here probably not so let's go in the pencil case it's still open, oh dear me. Now it's a case of, let's find a black pen I can actually use. And I don't want one too fine. How fine is that? That's super fine. Let's have a look at this Uniball pen and see if this will work. When you want a scrap of card, why is there never one just handy? So I'm just going to chest, yes, that's fine. I've got a Uniball pen. So you can use your micron pen, whichever you want, but this is a, a uniball. Yes, it is. And what I'm going to do is just put 
add my little little bit of a, a bauble just so it looks like it's hanging from those branches. Ooh, this uniball is really nice. You can tell I've not used that before. So just so you can see, it looks like it's hanging from there. And then, there it is. Let's add a little bit of shading around these circles. Let's just add it round part of it initially. I may add it round all of it, but we'll see. Everything's disappearing on me. So I'm just going to add that bit of shading. Just around. And you can just wipe some off if you're finding it's a little bit too dark. And just sort of pull it out, pull the colour out. Let me just look at that in camera. Yes, we're just going to do that on one side. Just add the shading just on one side and pull it out. There we go. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to grab that text stamp again. And let's just wipe that bit of moisture up. And I'm just going to take that mermaid lagoon again. But this time I'm not putting the stamp on an acrylic block. I'm just using it as is. And I'm just going to add a little bit of text curving my stamp so that I just add a little bit. Let me show you. Just so you can see, I've just curved it a little bit. Just to add a little bit of that text stamping. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of stamping down here, second generation, third generation, and just adding, just so it's it's got continuity around the edge. I can always tell if it just needs a little bit more. So I'm just going to add a little bit of the text just up here as well. Just to, there we go. I will lift this up so you can see. Just going to wipe that stamp again. Just placing that back and then what I want to do do I want another little penguin 3d done see I like to use the acetate so that one is facing that one I don't want it facing that way so this one I always like to use the acetate because what I'm thinking is I can have one that's 3d Let's just have a look. So let's pick the stamp up. We can all, we don't have to use it. We can decide afterwards. So just grab some scrap card. Just take that penguin again. Just stamp him off onto a scrap of white card. And then I can cut him out. Where am I going now? Where's my scissors? She knows it can't find anything on this desk. Where's my little scissors gone? I must have, honestly, I must have about 10 pairs of these scissors. There they are. And we're just going to cut that out. And 
and you can leave a white border around your penguin that looks nice but because I've got quite a white background you know there's, there's it's not dark in color I'm just going to cut it edge to edge so just cut that out so if you imagine you could put the two penguins on a background have a heart in the middle and then it would be an anniversary card especially if you've got an anniversary in December January February time you could use it then so just cut this out One thing I should have done was grab my pens. So I want a couple of greys. And it doesn't matter what pen you use. You can use your alcohol markers. I haven't used the correct card for alcohol markers, but again, it wouldn't matter for this card because you're not blending. And what I'm doing is I'm using a couple of grey Ecoline pens. And what I'm going to do to colour the penguin is I'm just going to add dots I'm not going to blend I'm not going to do anything I'm just going to add dots just to color it in a different way so I'm going to add the lighter dots 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 and then add the darker one so I'm just going to color it with a few dots because you don't want to add too much colour to the penguin. You just want to add a few dots. And we want to do that on these as well. I will lift it up so that you can see. Just adding, you're just adding a touch of colour. You're not overpowering the penguin. You're just giving it, it's like it's sort of, you're just giving it a bit of shading because you don't want to colour it in too much. Then use the darker one. I will lift it up so you can see because it's very difficult to see in camera when you're doing when you're doing greys. It's probably you can see it more if it's got a darker background but Let me show you. Let's see if we can see that in camera. You're just adding dots just to give it a suggestion of some colour. And then you can go back with the lighter colour. And it just sort of, it looks a bit more blended. But you don't want it to look like that anyway. You're just dotting it. And it does actually add, in real life, it does actually add a bit of depth to your penguin. Oh, don't let's forget this one. It does add a little bit of depth to the penguin. But your alcohol markers will be a bit deeper in colour. So we'll show up even more. Let me just get rid of those, just so that you can see. We've just got some dots, just add some dots. And what I'm thinking is this penguin can just go here. Then I've got an odd number of penguins. So let's take some 3D foam. Put the big square bit in his fatness of his body. Just remove the first layer. Cannot keep takes me longer to pull the thing off I'm just then grabbing some of my sisal nest you can use cotton twine anything like that I'm just using sisal nest as a texture mainly because I like that I like adding that little bit of texture 
let me oops <laughs> flinging it across the, the floor let me just add a little bit of adhesive to this just so that it sticks just in case it tries to come undone which is not what we want so I've got three layers no I've got two layers I can't count of 3d foam just to add just to give in 3d effect so what I want to do now let's hope oh let's see if I've got another one spare oh I have always got spares so I've got an anti-static bag and I'm just going to add that just over there we go just adding my anti-static bag over there let's just get that excess powder off And then what I'm going to do is use a quickie glue pen and I'm just going to add some circles with my quickie glue pen. I'm not thinking about it too much, just adding some circles to this foliage. So just taking my time. It takes a couple of seconds, not long, for the quickie, quickie, quickie glue pen to go from blue to clear. When it's gone from blue to clear, that means it's, it's sticky. And whatever you place on that will stick to it. So you could add your gold leaf, your silver leaf, which, whichever you want. You could add your glitter, whatever you wish. Don't want any on here. Can't make my mind up. Don't want any on there. No, let's leave it at that initially. Let's get a scrap of paper. Crikey, where does the time go? So just let me see if that's all gone clear. There's a couple that are still a little bit blue. Let's just waft it a little bit in a professional manner because that'll make the camera go absolutely mental. Just takes a couple of seconds just for it to go clear. Let's just take the risk. And I'm using gold embossing powder. Let's see if it's stuck. I did some little, to oh, I can see there it's missed. I think that's okay. Let's have a look what this looks like. Just tip that excess off. And of course I haven't plugged my heat tool in, of course I haven't. And the dogs are obviously now fighting each other because I've just heard Ian shout. Just heating my heat tool up and then we can heat those bits of gold. Just hope they show up. I will lift it up because it won't show on camera. Because they're on the little dots. Oh yes. Turning my card around just so I don't heat the same area over and over again. Oh 
Oh yes, we like that. So just so that you can see that, let me just tilt it. Hopefully you can, let me just, that's it. You can see that it's got just little touches of the gold just on there. And I just love that. It just brings it to life. It gives it a little touch of opulence and a little bit more interest as well. Absolutely love that. Just gives it a little bit more interest. So that's really nice. Whoops, let's unplug that heat tool. We'll add the sentiment in just a while. Let me just put that on the floor. So what I've done now is I've got a piece of card, a piece of white card that's a quarter of an inch bigger. So it was three and a half by eight. So this is three and three quarters by eight and a quarter. So just a quarter of an inch bigger. And I'm just going to use that Mermaid Lagoon just to add a blue mat. And it means that the mat will coordinate beautifully with the card and the colours we've used in the background. Just makes everything pop then. So just move it around. And it doesn't matter whether it's beautifully blended because the card is going to go over the top. So you're just going to see a hint of the colour. Just wipe that area again, just so that we don't get in a mess. These are my quick cards, still takes me ages. So I'm going to add that to that blue mat, it just makes it pop a little bit more. We just, just had to order some more glue, I just realised I was running out. So just add that and I'm going to stand up just because I can see a little bit better if I'm standing up. That gold really does add something to the card, especially in real life, really does add something to it. Right, we're going to get a bit of twine. We're going to get, not that was a bit of my accent there. So I'm going to use some natural twine. I always cut a little bit more than I need just because it makes it easier for me to tie a little bow. Just grab the twine. But I've got a little bookmark here it was just a piece of card that was left but can you imagine adding the penguins to this and just put a heart at the top and you've got an anniversary card so you can always use it in different ways what i'm going to do now is create a little bow and then i can make it as small or as big as i want i end up faffing more with the bow than anything else. Just want a little one. Just to add here. Just do another one as well. The natural twine gives it a little bit of texture. Oops, gone a little bit too far there. Told you I faffed with the bows, didn't I? Move them out the way. So just going to add these little bows here. So I can just use a little bit, she says, a little bit of my PVA and just press that on there. Just hold that in place for a few seconds 
just so it grabs a hold. Place that on there. Again, just wait a couple of seconds until it just grabs. Just give it time just to grab. Then you can add that to a white card, which is then four inches by eight and a half. And I cut that out at A3 card. Got a little bit of embossing powder just at the back of my card, which is handy, if not. Just place that onto there. Let's just give that a bit of time just to grab hold. I always take a few seconds so that it grabs hold, just so that you can see that. You could even add a little heart inside the penguin's body as well, I think. Right, what I'm going to do is I've decided I'm going to extend the shading all the way around the circles just to give a little bit more dimension. That's me just being a little bit fussy. I just want to extend it around just so it extends. I just think with that twine bow, it just needs to pop a little bit more. There we go, that's better. I'm going to add a little bit more texture. Let's just put this gold embossing. Away. So what we're going to do is, I've got stuff everywhere. going to add some mica flakes which again are going to be difficult to see in camera but you're used to that by now so I'm just going to add some little blobs that's a professional term of PVA just around there we'll just add a little bit around here just around the base of the penguin just going up just a little bit more let's just grab my scrap paper just to catch the excess use these distress mica flakes just brings a little bit of texture to the design and then just press them in and what you're supposed to do is let that dry let that dry and then tip off the excess. Do I do that? No. I just carry on tipping and then pressing and then I tip off the excess. But you're used to that by now. So I'll just tip these back. I'm going to lift that up so you can see those, you can see that gold, you can see those mica flakes and you can see the mica flakes just at the bottom where the penguin is and then we just need a sentiment. So I think we'll go for, because I know you love that sound effect. I can hear you all laughing now at my sound effects. I know what you like. So we're going to stamp that in black. You don't need to add much ink because it's only a small stamp. Let's pick a bit of the stamp that isn't covered in black ink. You don't need to press too hard. And I'm just going to put that on my paper trimmer. 
just because it's a little bit easier. And what you could do with this piece that's left, sellotape that back up and then you've got a stencil of the penguin. So just another idea for you. Then we've got this. Now I was deciding whether just to stick it there and it lifts, but I don't like that. So we're going to make it smaller, like so. And we're going to put that there. Just add that there. so and obviously you would let that just grab hold for a few seconds before you added your shading you know i'm not going to wait for that don't you and this would make a great card for one of my nephews There you go. Let's just blend that out. It's like how I go quiet when I blend. The dogs are now barking because Ian's cutting carrot. And when it's carrot time, they go mad. So you've got a lovely simple card there that's got the gold embossing, just to give you some gold highlights. It's got the stamping in the background. You've got your bauble penguins, your penguin baubles even. But you don't have to have a Christmas if you don't wish. You can just create different things. Let me just go and get you another card. So it'll go quiet for a few seconds. Now, if you don't want it to be Christmas at all, you then have this card, which is like an anniversary card. It says together. And I just think that looks beautiful. And that's just using it in a different way. There's always a reason for me to go quiet on my videos because I always have to go and grab a card or go and grab something just to show you a different way of doing things it's just me all over right I'm just going to grab this white pen just add a white highlight here just on the heart just wet this and just add a little bit of shading just around that heart there we go and that is your card finished apart from the good old white splatter and have I picked a pen that works of course I haven't picked a pen that works. What about this one? Has this got any in? I don't think I've used my pens that much. That's better. Just added some white splatters just to finish the card off, just so that you can see that. Just some delicate white splatters. And that is your card finished. Simple, but still got layers, still got dimension, and still has texture. So I'm really pleased with that. Just hoping you can see that touch of gold. Them are like your gold berries. And that is your card finished. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you like the new stamps. 
Uh, I hope you can join me on Friday on the craft store because uh, I'll have lots more demos then with the new release. Um, and I hope you all have a good week. See you all soon. Bye for now. Bye everybody. Love to all.